All right, good morning. Let's get started. Thank you to everybody uh, who made it out to this 400 level session. Uh, very early morning. Hopefully, you have your coffee. Um, we thought, uh, you know, to get started, we're going to talk today and do a deep dive uh, into building trusted services with Skype for Business Online. Uh, and we start, thought we'd start off uh, a bit different. Um, I'm actually going to start off this session, uh, and we're actually just going to make a phone call here. Um, so what you're seeing over here on the left is just my mobile phone. And I'm going to just make a quick call to this phone number. Welcome to the Microsoft Ignite Skype developer platform session. To hear a session on the Skype web and app SDK, press 1. To hear a session on the new trusted application API, press 2. To repeat these options, press 0. So we just saw a great session yesterday on the, the web SDK and app SDK. So I think today, let's, let's select two. Let's, let's hear that presentation. To hear an introduction from Ganesh Sridharan, Principal Software Engineer for the Developer Platform, press 1. To hear an introduction from David Newman, Program Manager for the Developer Platform, press 2. To repeat these options, press 0. Sorry, Ganesh, I think we're going to have to go over to me for the intro. Thanks. Please wait while we transfer your call. And what we're going to see is we're now getting an incoming call. Transfer here, I can, can answer this. And now we have an audio call that's been established. Why did I, sh why did I show that? Um, this is actually an example that we're going to deep dive on today uh, using our trusted application API. So this app is built uh, entirely on Skype for Business Online on our voice services. Uh, we're going to deep dive on this capability and look at some code later in the session. So we thought we'd use that to help uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, so like the uh, basic IVR uh, mentioned, my name is David Newman. Uh, I'm a program manager with the Skype developer platform. And I do have a focus on um, some of our new capabilities and APIs for Skype for Business Online. Uh, and I'm joined today by Ganesh. Hey, I'm Ganesh. I'm an engineering manager for the Skype uh, developer platform. Great. Thanks, Ganesh. Um, so what are we going to cover today? Let's see if I can find the clicker here, which we lost. So, Oh, here we go. Perfect. Uh, so we're, what are we going to cover? Um, we're going to spend a bit of time, and I'm, I'm, this is really you know, one of the first times that we've actually kind of uh, talked about some of these capabilities within the Trusted Application API. So I know that this is uh, a 400 level developer session, but you're going to have to bear with me for a few slides uh, where I'm going to introduce um, some concepts, uh, introduce some scenarios, um, but we're going to spend most of the time going into some, some technical uh, details. So we're really going to introduce you to um, this approach that we now have for developing these trusted services for Skype for Business Online. Uh, we want to make sure that you can understand the general development model as well as the architecture uh, of the API itself. Um, and we're going to look at a few different code samples and well as some uh, best practices for development using this, uh, this API. And I may be too far away. There we go. Um, so if, if, if anyone saw the session uh, that we had on Tuesday, Andrew Bybee actually gave us a great overview of the, the Skype developer platform as a whole. I really just wanted to touch on this in case anyone is not familiar with the developer platform offers. Um, essentially, uh, what we provide is a set of capabilities that are built on the core services uh, provided by Microsoft and, and Office 365, uh, including Skype for Business, including uh, Azure, including our uh, PSTN network and capabilities uh, as a part of Office 365. Um, and on top of that, we actually offer a set of uh, workloads and capabilities that we expose through our developer platform. Uh, through our APIs uh, and SDKs for various platforms, we give you a range of different options for you to actually uh, develop custom applications, whether for yourself as a customer or uh, have opportunities to build solutions as, as ISVs and actually be able to sell those solutions. Um, and we're really targeting on providing that set of APIs across 
various experiences and platform types, whether that's a mobile device, web platform, uh, or a back-end cloud service, uh, for example. And so what I'm going to do now is actually, clicker's a little slow there. Um, one slide, I'm going to, we're not going to deep dive in this particular session on all the different scenarios. Um, I really just kind of want to get you oriented around the way that we think about the Trusted Application API. And really in our roadmap going forward, what do we think that this API is going to enable, enable for you from a scenario perspective? Uh, so we're, we're really uh, oriented around providing you with this native cloud platform that you can build a whole range of type of solutions uh, for Skype for Business Online. Everything from building uh, bots, services, solutions, basic IVR like you saw, um, more trusted meeting management apps, uh, any voice apps that are built uh, on top of our uh, voice service in Skype for Business Online, uh, more complex uh, remote advisor scenarios that may also use the web and app SDK, um, as well as many, many more, more scenarios. One question you might ask is in the first release uh, of this API, am, are we going to have all these features available? Uh, the short answer is no. Um, we're actually going to be working uh, in an iterative way and actually bringing more and more features to this API. But I really wanted to get you thinking around, these are the types of scenarios that we're targeting. So if you have a solution that falls into one of these categories, um, this would be the API that you should think about as, you know, going forward, this is where we're going to innovate on and bring these new types of services to. Um, one thing to call out, there, there's likely a lot, a lot of folks in the room that may have uh, on-premises applications or are familiar with development uh, with UCMA. Uh, we see this particular API as the path forward for bringing those uh, on-premises trusted applications and services and bringing those to, to Skype for Business Online. Uh, we also think of this in the way of not only kind of creating parity between things that we had on-prem, uh, but also being able to innovate with new capabilities that are, are coming to the cloud. And we're going to show you some, uh, some examples of that, of being able to build solutions that are only possible uh, as a cloud solution, something that you could not do on-prem, uh, and leveraging some Azure cloud services that, uh, that are only possible uh, uh, through the cloud. Uh, one thing I'll call out as well, did anybody see uh, the demo uh, in Gurdeep's session on Monday of the uh, organizational attendant or call queues um, capability? Yeah, we got a, a few people in the room. So those are uh, brand new services that we're bringing uh, to Skype for Business Online and E5, the ability to have a voice auto attendant uh, as, as well as do uh, custom call queues uh, directly from the Office 365 admin portal and be able to, to configure those. Those voice services are actually built on this same platform. So we not only provide this platform as a platform for our third parties and our customers you know, to go and build on, this is actually something that we build our trusted services within the service ourselves. Uh, so that gives you an idea of some of the scenarios and really what we're working on uh, around this API. So let's jump over to uh, a basic architecture view. Um, I want to start off very simply. A lot of times there's a lot of confusion around, um, you know, what are, the, what are the different APIs that you offer? What are the different F SDKs? It sounds like you have quite a lot as a part of the Skype developer platform. Um, when in reality, it's actually a very simple model uh, that we take. We have the core Skype for Business Online service. Uh, on top of that, we have our RESTful service layer. Um, and we call that, that's our API layer. Uh, and essentially what that does is exposes uh, an HTTP interface that can communicate over the web. Um, and you can actually build your apps directly on top of that HTTP interface. Um, what we have added is a set of SDKs as well that actually abstract away some of the detail of that REST API. Um, so you, that you have easy SDKs that are built for specific platforms uh, that make it uh, a lot quicker to do your development. And we add in additional features, like for example, on mobile, we add in a, a media stack uh, within that SDK. Um, so if we take a look and jump from this view, I'm going to switch over to the next slide. You'll see I kept uh, some of the color coding there. So if we go back and forth, you can see what we're looking at here. Let's, let's first look at this 
uh, this red layer, this uh, our RESTful API. One key point to land here is that you'll, you'll, some of you will be familiar with uh, UCWA or our, our user API, which is essentially our RESTful API for building uh, user-based scenarios. Um, what we're actually doing is we're not introducing a brand new uh, API in the Trusted Application API. We are actually just extending our RESTful API that we have with UCWA uh, and extending that into Trusted Applications. So they're all a part of that same API layer. And we're going to look at some of the architecture principles, and you see that they are very, very similar. It's really all a part of that same service. Uh, the user API is for building user scenarios. The trusted application API is for building apps that do not have a user identity. They need to act as a trusted service um, that doesn't have some user context uh, in play with that particular application. And so. One key point to land there, it's a single interface. You'll see that a lot of the architecture principles are coming directly from uh, UCWA. On top of that, uh, like I mentioned, you can build your apps directly on top of that RESTful layer. The value of that is that it's, it's, it's cross-platform. You can write really to any programming language that you want that supports an HTTP uh, interface. Uh, but what we provide is actually a set of SDKs that are specific for platforms and can really accelerate your development for those various platforms. So we had a session yesterday that focused on uh, some of the new changes that we have and some of the upcoming releases around the web SDK and our app SDK. So we're not going to go into detail uh, of those two SDKs today. We're going to focus over here on this, this right side where um, we're actually now extending that REST API and we're actually going to provide uh, a set of SDKs built on top of that REST API uh, that will help accelerate uh, your development of these cloud service applications. Um, and that will include, like we said, it, it's an HTTP interface, so if we provide a C-sharp library, that doesn't mean that you have to go and use that C-sharp library. Uh, if you prefer, you can go and use something like Node.js for writing these uh, server-side uh, applications. And uh, let's, let's leave questions to the end. We have quite a bit of content, so I'm going I'm to leave the questions till the end. Uh, one more thing to call out here is that uh, not only will this API expose uh, basic signaling capabilities, we're also going to expose to you uh, our media platform as a service through the trusted application API. Uh, so you'll be able to access those media capabilities that we have directly through uh, this REST API. Um, like I mentioned, I want to call out a, a few things here. We get a lot of questions around uh, why can I not just use UCMA, my existing applications, and, and, and bring those to, to the cloud. Um, one of the key principles that we're looking at with this API and the reason that we take this RESTful approach uh, is for a, a number of different reasons. But um, really, we're thinking about this in a way of designing for the cloud first. Um, UCA, UCMA is a very powerful platform, and we're bringing many of those scenarios into online. Um, but in many ways, that architecture doesn't translate well to uh, the architecture of a multi-tenant uh, type environment. Um, and so we're taking this RESTful approach that allows you to uh, host those applications where you need to host them, um, but also have an approach that allows you to scale out uh, to many customers. Uh, it, it allows you to actually use any programming language that you need, as well as it allows us to iterate very quickly uh, on the features that we're now bringing to that, uh, that REST interface. A couple quick slides. Um, many of you are probably already familiar with REST. This model is the exact same model that you've seen within uh, UCWA or UCWA. Um, essentially, it's just an architectural pattern that we'll have where we have a set of resources, we have a set of capabilities, um, and your communication with the API is all over uh, HTTP, so standard uh, CRUD-based requests. Um, you're accessing those resources and capabilities um, through the, the REST API. Um, the way we've designed the API uh, is very similar to how we uh, designed uh, UCWA. Again, it's all part of that, uh, that same interface. So you have a set uh, of resources, for example, online meetings as a resource. Um, and you have a set, set of capabilities like start messaging, for example. Um, and our P API, again, will have a single uh, entry point, um, and you'll be able to navigate through that uh, API graph 
um, to be able to access those capabilities. And there's some key principles there, um, like hypermedia that we've translated from UCWA over to this uh, new interface, um, where you want to make sure, for example, you're not hard coding URLs. Uh, you're always dynamically grabbing those URLs uh, in case, for example, capabilities are changing from uh, tenant to tenant or environment to environment. Oh, yeah, sure, go. Uh, I'll go quickly back. Uh, this, this is, a, this is uh, a, you know, a pretty, pretty standard uh, uh, architecture. You've likely seen it if you've used any other Office 365 APIs. If you've used Graph API before, that's a, uh, a REST-based uh, API as well. All right, let's go ahead. Um, I talked about familiar concepts uh, within, within this API. Um, so we're actually bringing forward, and you'll see some of these very similar concepts uh, if you are familiar with development with the user, user API or UCWA. Um, so we're bringing, again, that Azure Active Directory app model and framework will be the same app model that we're using for these trusted applications. So that includes the permissions framework, uh, cons consent of applications for tenant admins. Uh, it includes a single discovery entry point for the API. Uh, uh, includes authentication against Azure Active Directory. It's a bit of a different type of authentication, but it's still the same principle against uh, Azure AD for those applications. Um, we're bringing, again, uh, concepts of being able to initialize an application in the same way that we have with uh, UCWA, and we're bringing forward um, within that API after discovery, having a set of links and resources that you can navigate through in that REST API uh, to access the capabilities that you need for your solutions. Um, what this translates to as well is that many of the debugging uh, principles that we have with UCWA will translate also over to the Trusted Application API. So things like being able to examine HTTP traces, looking for error codes will, will also translate over and be valuable for your development uh, against this API. Okay, so you know, let me give you a few more slides that we're gonna go over to Ganesh. Um, some, new, some new principles. I really wanna call out some things that are new um, that you may not have seen before from the developer platform. Um, you may be familiar with registration within Azure Active Directory. Um, of applications for Office 365. Uh, this also applies to trusted apps, so that will be a necessary step uh, for you on the registration side. There's also now an additional registration step for trusted applications where you will register your app uh, against the Skype for Business uh, online service as a trusted app. And that set of registration will be on the role of the developer, on the role of the ISV. Um, there's also now another step, um, and again, as a part of that process, you can make your application multi-tenant, for example, be able to enable multiple customers um, you know, from a single application that you've developed and deployed. Um, the second step is uh, you would expect your customers also need to configure or set up endpoints for your particular application. For example, um, let's take a uh, basic help desk app that you might write um, using the, the trusted application API. Uh, your customers may want to configure specific endpoints for that help desk sol solution. They may have multiple endpoints of your single app. And for each of those endpoints, um, we do plan to actually expose an experience within the Skype for Business online admin portal uh, where tenant admins can go in and do app configuration. They can actually set up uh, endpoints. Um, they can actually configure those endpoints with a SIP address, for example, with a phone number when applicable. So in the same way, you go into the uh, Skype for Business admin portal to get a PSTN number and assign that to a user, you will be able to get a PSTN service number and actually be able to assign that to your trusted application. And there's a couple other parameters, and Ganesh is actually gonna show um, how we are enabling that also through a UI experience, but as well as through PowerShell to be able to uh, go and register these, these types of trusted endpoints. There we go. Um, another new concept, I talked about authentication. Um, it, we're still supporting a model of authentication against Azure Active Directory. 
but the model for service act applications is not a uh, user-based authentication where you may see a redirect to a login screen from a web page, for example, uh, but this is actually a service-to-service -service based authentication using something called the uh, OAuth 2 client credentials grant flow. Um, so this is something that's you know, well documented um, as a part uh, of Azure Active Directory. Uh, and it's a standard flow for service apps to actually be able to authenticate and get an access token from Azure AD uh, with, by using a certificate-based authentication. So you don't need a username and password. You don't need a page redirect to actually get that access token. That access token is then going to be used against the Skype for Business online service to actually be able to uh, authenticate your app and access the capabilities that are available through the API. Uh, another uh, new concept is uh, in our user API, we actually had a, a concept of, of eventing, real-time eventing. And we actually did that through something called a, a pending get channel, uh, which is a great model for client-based applications, web apps and mobile apps, to be able to get events uh, in real time for that particular app. Um, that doesn't translate well over to the service application side, especially when you, when you want to scale out uh, your service applications. Uh, so we've actually introduced uh, webhooks uh, support as a part of the trusted AP application API. Um, so you can actually specify a specific callback and you will receive events to that uh, callback from the service. So you don't need to have a channel, pending get channel, uh, open with the service. We actually will send those events directly to this uh, callback. And we do have a lot of uh, actual uh, Additional extensions that we've added that, for example, being able to specify custom context for each of, uh, each of your conversations so that um, you're actually receiving callbacks to a specific uh, custom URL for each conversation. So when you register your app, you'll specify a default URL, which will be your default callback URL. Um, but within the API, you also have capabilities to actually specify custom context so you can, for example, receive uh, specific events and know that they're from a specific conversation that has been started using this API. All right, over to Ganesh. Thanks, thanks, David. I don't know if you guys digested the fact that uh, building online applications, especially if you're on ISV, it's going to tremendously increase the potential possibilities of what you can build. Uh, to give you an analogy, if you build a UCMA application, the time to actually get it to various companies uh, to deploy them took a really long time. You guys saw that. Uh, but if you build an online application, the time to actually have a tenant use that is going to be significantly reduced, and the way you can scale out is going to be significantly increased. Uh, so it's a great thing, in my opinion, if I'm an ISV. Uh, but there are a few things you need to be aware uh, when you build an online application. So it's kind of, I'm going to go through some of the generic concepts of building a, a cloud application. Um, so you need to be aware of that. Even though you, you may know it, I'm just going to go through them so that you, you kind of go in a little bit deeper level. One is features. You need to know what features you are building. Uh, we offer as a part of Trusted API platform, we offer a, a wide range of features. We will be adding to that as well. Uh, so you need to know what kind of applications you are building. Uh, the second thing you need to be uh, taking care of is the scalability. Your app, the way you build your applications should be linearly scalable. And this is going to be impacting your business in some ways because if your, if your particular application is very popular and a lot of companies are deploying it and you want to have an architecture which scales linearly so you can onboard those tenants pretty much with just command lights and configurations. Availability. Let's take Azure for an example. If you are running your app on Azure, the VMs will go down. Uh, you cannot assume uh, it's running in a closed premise where you can you can have the app running based on um, some specific maintenance. So the VMs will go down. So you need to you need to understand how you can persist state. Uh, I'm going to talk about a couple of architecture uh, principles uh, to kind of give you a hint on how you you can uh, manage your state. But you need to make sure your service is available. Latency. 
When I make a call, it better, uh, it better come to the service and gets answered in, in a very fast time. We are talking about service-to-service -service communication, so you should make sure whatever applications you build, you have minimum latency, and that kind of goes back to some of the principles we had in UCMA. All your uh, code should be asynchronous in nature and should never block any thread. I see Chris, and he, he knows uh, lots about uh, building asynchronous solutions, so it's probably nothing new to him. Uh, life cycle. Uh, you need to have, a, a, as I told you, you in the on-prem world, you ship a product, it's a box product, you, you, can, you can have a way to update it. But in online, it's a continuous update model. So you need to understand how you are going to update from your version one of your app to version two of your app and subsequent versions uh, in a very short time so that you can actually add updates um, pretty much without even any uh, external uh, uh, people knowing that you are actually releasing updates. Data integrity. Whatever data you store, it has to be, you have to respect the the region boundaries, uh, if, if you have a tenant who wants to store uh, data in only particular region, even though you're, you might be running a service which is worldwide, but if a tenant is in a particular region, you want to make sure it, it gets stored in one place. And not only stored, it gets replicated in a couple of other data centers so that if a particular data center goes down, you can resurrect the data from some other data, data center. Portability, uh, this, is, this goes back to one of the things that um, uh, David said, which is, you, your code, your business logic should be in written in such a way that today you might be running in Azure, tomorrow if, I, if you run in, in some other environment, it should just work uh, so that you don't have to rewrite the whole app uh, if, if some, some customer wants you to run in a specific cloud. Talking about specific clouds, um, the way we uh, kind of recommend you to think about your application is your application, there's a core business logic of your application. That application can run in pretty much any cloud. Uh, of course, with, with uh, Windows Azure Cloud, we provide uh, express routes so that we can reduce the latency. Uh, but theoretically, it can, it can run on any cloud. So it can be a private cloud for a particular company, or it can be a hosted cloud by a, a different vendor, or of course, it can run on AWS. And uh, another thing I want to point out is, since all the APIs are accessed to the RESTful interface, it doesn't mean you have to write in C-sharp. Like in UCMA, it's a C-sharp SDK, so you have to write in C-sharp. Uh, you have to have a Windows, uh, unless you have mono. Uh, you have to have a Windows environment to make it work. Now, you're free to write in any language you choose. As long as it has a HTTP stack, it will work. Um, of course, you can use Linux, and you have Node.js running on Linux. Everything is possible now. OK. So if you are building a service, you have a couple of models to follow, uh, very high level. One is you're building a stateful service. Uh, m most of the applications which are kind of building some kind of a a conversation model where you have multiple modalities like messaging, audio, video, meetings, probably would fall in this, this category. Uh, so if you're building a, a stateful service, I and if you're using Azure, I would highly recommend you to take a look at Service Fabric. Azure offers the Service Fabric, which is kind of uh, a way to uh, make sure you have replications of in-memory state. So a typical architecture would look like this, where you get a request from your load balancers. Uh, there will be front-end web roles, which handles the HTTP request and uh, talks to a middle-tier compute layer, which is stateful. And you can use in this middle-tier, you can use service fabric to replicate the state. And um, whenever a node goes down, for example, uh, you, you, since you have replicated, another node can uh, service, fabric, service fabric already provides a way to resurrect the state. And of course, you can use some persistent storage, uh, either a SQL or, or a table storage, uh, to kind of persist your data for data, data analytics and uh, a data center failover, like disaster recovery scenarios. You can actually move over to a completely different data center. The other model is a stateless service, assuming you want your compute nodes to be completely stateless. Uh, the kind of apps that will use this are 
let's say I'm, I'm only dealing with like a, a single call. I'm not in the conversation model. I deal call by call basis. Uh, I'm just going to play some prompts and that's it. Um, so theoretically, you, can, you could build a stateless service for this and uh, you could persist whatever little state you have in a table storage and of course, you will have many reads and writes on a table storage. So you can have a caching layer uh, to speed up the reads and writes. Okay, so time for demo. We're gonna walk through uh, a customer cache scenario. This is more towards the stateful model I rep uh, represented. It, it basically is going to have a customer who is not part of the organization send a message to, a, to an application, an application is going to spin up a conference and in, uh, call, uh, invite an agent to help out the customer. Uh, so I'm gonna walk through a couple of call flows so that uh, you kind of get what is happening under the hood. Should uh, we show a demo, let, should we show the, let's show, a, let's show a demo first, then um, we'll walk through the call flows uh, of the demo that you're gonna see. Sure. So I'll just switch over really quick and I'm going to walk through this uh, this chat scenario. Let me make sure this call is ended. And so, like Ganesh said, what we're actually going to show here. Make sure all my pages are loaded. So, what you're actually seeing here. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. So, I've just got uh, two web browsers open. We're we're actually going to show. Um, this customer care scenario where we're taking uh, an anonymous customer from a web page, and so they're anonymous, they're not licensed with Skype for Business, they don't have some known account, um, they're just a user to this web page. Um, we're actually going to be able to now connect them directly to that trusted application API endpoint. We're actually going to be able to now bridge them into a conference and get an agent joined into that conference as well. So we'll have that trusted app that's actually managing the interaction, um, but from a customer perspective, they just look like they're getting connected um, directly to an agent. So um, over here on the right, I've got my customer widget, and this is, again, just a test harness that we have, two web pages. Uh, over here on the left, uh, I've actually got uh, my agent widget. So I'm gonna zoom out for a second. Um, and so over on the right side, you'll see that I've actually got some uh, information uh, about this particular customer. So I'm customer Tony Stark uh, within the web page. Uh, you can see we've got some nice context information. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at subject one uh, within the web page. Uh, I've got details um, here as well about my country, language, et cetera. Um, when I, what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to start a chat from this web page, and we're going to go through the call flow of actually what's happening here. Um, but within these web pages, we're actually using the Skype web SDK for the client experiences. We're actually now connecting that together with the trusted application API to build a full end-to-end -end scenario. So both the customer and the agent are in an embedded web experience using the Skype web SDK. So over here, um, customer context, I'm just going to go here, I'm going to click on start a chat. Uh, you'll see in the web page I've got some you know, prompts and notifications about you know, what's, what's actually happening. You can see here, um, you know, uh, we're starting a chat uh, engagement, we're connecting you an agent, so I'm getting connected to that, uh, that trusted application API. Um, I'm gonna get bridged uh, into, that, uh, into that conference. The application is gonna go find an agent that's available, um, and they're actually going to, again, try to pull them into that conference or pull them into that conversation. So you can see over here now on the left, I actually got a prompt um, as I'm logged into this as this agent. Uh, do I want to accept this customer call? I'm going to click on accept. And we'll see, once I've accepted that, we've actually now bridged that agent and that customer together through that conference managed by the Trusted App API. Um, one other thing we've used here as well is we've actually used the uh, conversation control available within the web SDK for this conversation. So you can see, you know, Tony Stark has joined. I'm now connected. I'll say hello. And you can see, um, using that conversation control, I didn't have to build out custom UI for myself. That all just comes out of the box with that, uh, that basic UX control. Um, along with that conversation, not only were we connected, but I was able to pass that context information from that web page over to the agent. 
And so you can see here that the info that I had, had entered earlier, I see, you know, name, Tony Stark, I see email here. Um, I've got a, you know, visit ID, I've got the subject that he was looking at. So I can immediately jump into that conversation and, and, and know how to talk to that customer. So if we go back over here as customer, um, I'm going to just type a message to the agent, and you'll see that I actually get now a typing indi indicator on the agent side to, to know when that customer is actually typing. So I'm going to say, I need help with subject two. And we see we got the is typing indicator. Over here on the left, uh, we see that we got um, that message coming through to the agent. Um, now let's say, for example, as this agent, um, I don't know a whole lot about subject two. I'm actually an expert in subject one. Um, so I'm, I'm panicking a little bit. I don't, I don't really know what to do. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, just quickly send something to the customer so they know that I'm still here. Um, I'll say, you know, subject two is really great. We have the best subject two. But I really know nothing about subject two. Um, and so while I'm actually doing that, I'm actually, I know that we actually have a set of agents in my organization that are experts within subject two. Um, so I'm going to actually figure out, can I actually just consult with an agent um, about subject two, somebody that I know is the expert here. And so we got what we have over here on the left is you can see that I have a little frame here um, where I actually have this ability to actually consult uh, with another agent who's actually uh, an expert in subject two. So, okay, customer wants to know about subject two. I'm going to select subject two here. Um, and I'm actually going to go then and click the uh, consult button to pull in an agent uh, who's an expert in uh, subject two. And when I showed this yesterday, or when I showed this in our uh, previous developer platform session, I showed just inviting an agent directly into the conversation. So we had a multi-party chat. In this case, I'm just going to do a consult with the agent. And I'm actually logged in here over on my other web browser, happen to be logged in as an agent who is an expert in subject two. And so that, was, that call was routed to that queue, and now this agent is getting this request to be pulled into the conversation. So I'm going to get accept. What I don't show here is that this agent would, of course, get a transcript um, of this conversation. Um, and then here, I can actually now go and type, uh, I know the answer to this. this agent one is blank. Um, so, so I know the answer. Now, if we actually go back and look at agent one and the customer, we'll see that because we did a consult here, the message actually came through over to agent one, but on the customer side, the customer did not see that there was another participant as a part of that conference. Um, they didn't get that message from the agent that they were sending back and forth. And that's because through the Trusted Application API, we actually provide an ability to bridge those conversations and actually be able to decide who can see whose messages within that conference. So that's how we enable some of those more you know, complex contact center type scenarios, being able to have a supervisor join in, listen to the conversation without the anonymous customer being able to see that conversation. In some cases, maybe I actually do want the customer to see that agent. I want to bring that agent in, maybe do a warm transfer, drop myself off. That other agent is now in that uh, conversation with the customer. This is only possible through using that power of the Trusted Application API and then combining that with the client experiences that we have through the Web SDK to kind of build this kind of full end-to-end -end customer care scenario. So now let's jump out and look act actually at some of those flow details. really happen underneath the covers. Um, David walked through the client credentials call flow. So assuming that your application is already authenticated with the service, uh, what, what happened is when the customer is viewing the web page, he sees the chat button. And of course, you can, you can figure out whether the chat button has to be default or proactive. It's all application logic. Uh, when he clicks on the chat button, it basically tells your app saying that your customer is wanting to chat with an agent, and your application goes back and to the API platform says, okay, I need a temporary guest token for this customer to access uh, Sky for Business. And the customer's web page is actually running our Skype web SDK, 
uh, you can pass in all the context details into the web SDK, and the web SDK through, through the UCWA protocol, it's going to connect to the trusted API platform. Um, so this is the bootstrapping of web SDK, where you can bootstrap the web SDK with the context. Uh, context can be anything. It's, it's, uh, if you are familiar with uh, multi-part content, it's, we provide a multi-part content, so that means you can pretty much capture whatever the customer is viewing and relay it back both to the application and potentially when you, when you invite an agent, it can be relayed back there as well, and it can persist along transfers. So here, uh, once the customer web page, which, which has the SDK, uh, web SDK running, um, gets all the data, it can use the temporary guest token to authenticate itself against UCWA APIs. Um, so once it gets authentication, then pretty much you use the web SDK as if you, you, you probably are familiar with the messaging APIs in the web SDK. You would use the exact same API to message, to render. You can use, the, as David said, you can use the conversation control to show the UI. What, what will happen is whenever you send a message, it's actually going to the uh, application. The application is acting like a bridge, bridging these messages into a conference. Now, the application at any time uh, can choose to invite an agent. Uh, going back to the webhook slide, the application is registered a callback URL, so it is getting receiving all the notifications of, about what is happening in the chat from this callback URI. Uh, uh, the application can kind of uh, filter the messages that are exchanged as well. And that's what David shows where if one of the consulting agent is sending a message, the application is saying, this is a consul I know this is a consulting agent, and uh, I'm not going to relay this message to all the customer. So it can configure the filtering part, and pretty much you can do whatever uh, you've been familiar with doing in UCMA. So that is what is happening underneath the covers. Great. So let's actually, before we move on to the next scenario, let's, uh, let's quickly look at uh, one of the first code samples that we're going to be releasing uh, as a part of the first trusted application API release uh, is going to be exactly for this particular scenario that you saw here. And so I'm going to show you uh, a quick preview of, of what's a, what that's going to look like. And, and what it will actually be is a code sample that includes both your trusted application API code that you can deploy it to Azure, uh, as well as the client pieces that you need to power this anonymous customer scenario. And so what we're looking at here, you may be very familiar with, is actually these are just our exact Skype Web SDK samples. And we're actually adding in a sample here um, that shows this anonymous customer directly talking to the trusted application API and shows that really that end-to-end -end scenario. And what we've done is not only do we have the sample, we've really put in some steps for you here to actually see what are the various requests and steps that are actually happening here not only on the client side, but the first set of steps that I have here are actually showing what's actually happening in the back end with that trusted service. So like we talked about, um, one of our first steps will obviously be we need to get authenticated against Azure AD using that client credentials grant flow. So what I have here in the page, uh, I have a little snippet that shows, you know, here's the code that you can use to actually, and that we're using in this live sample, um, as the backend service app is using that to go and get a, get a token after they've kind of set up uh, the certificate flow there. Um, after that, you can see, like we went over, the first step would be we have a you know, discovery request. That would be one of the first requests that we send you know, after we've gotten that token. We need to do our discovery step, and we get back. You can see here there's a response. We'll get back an applications link, very similar to how we had on uh, UCWA. Once I get that you know, discover URL, if I actually do a, a, po uh, a get on that applications, I'm going to get a 401 un unauthorized. And the reason I'm getting that is because I'm unauthenticated. So how do I authenticate? I actually now include as a header, I include that token that I got from the Azure Active Directory step to get that access token. And once I include that, scroll down again here in our sample, we can just easily walk through this. So I included the AAD token in the authorization header, and I get back that application's link. If I do, like just like uh, UCWA, if I do a get on the applications, 
I'm returned a set of uh, resources uh, in the response. Uh, and you can see just like, uh, let's zoom out again, just like uh, we had with our user API, I've got a set of embedded resources that I can directly access. For example, join online meeting here, uh, start messaging, I uh, can you know, schedule meetings as this backend service application. But I also have this new resource called a non-application token tokens. And that is actually the resource that we would use to generate that guest user or non-token, pass that back to our client app. So now our client app can now authenticate using that token. So brand new resource that's available there and you would get that um, directly from the, the trusted application API. And so really this sample is kind of not only showing you these little code snippets, but of course you can go through and walk through this live. So if I click on this button, you know, get that anonymous token and discover a URL that our, our web SDK will use to authenticate uh, anonymously. Uh, if I go and run this sample live, I'll get back that uh, access token. I'll get back that discover URL. And we can actually just walk through this live, um, which hopefully my backend sample is actually, um, actually running. We'll wait a second here sometimes. <coughs> bit slow, but uh, here once we get that, then we're actually using live web SDK code to use that and actually then anonymously sign in and start a chat conversation. Exact same kind of sample you just saw me walk through. So you can see there, I got my discover URL, I got my anonymous token. We're now going to use those um, directly within that anonymous sign in in the web, web SDK. There we go. We've signed in successfully. Um, we can walk through the requests that are actually happening there. I'm going to click on start chat. It's going to say, you know, it's going to find an agent in the same way, get me connected. Um, so it said it's found an agent. I'm actually logged in over here. I got a welcome message directly from the trusted app over here uh, in the Skype for Business client. I hope I'm logged in as the right agent, but I should get a toast then uh, as an agent to join that uh, particular conversation. I've now bridged and can have that conversation, you know, directly back and forth. So it looks like I'm not logged in as the right agent that's specified. Um, but this sample is the exact scenario that you just saw us walk through. So that will be one of the first samples that we make available uh, as a part of our first release. With that, let's jump back over to our next scenario. Okay. Thanks. Uh, okay, coding time. Uh, Nine o'clock coding, it's good. <laughs> So I'm going to actually use the first demo that you saw where uh, we had IVR play and see if we can actually code up an IVR in whatever time we have. Uh, 27 minutes. 27 minutes. So assuming that you have an IVR solution and there is a, there's a tenant asking, OK, I have new prompts. I want to build a new IVR flow. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to build. Um, the first thing I want to walk, walk, over, walk over with you is this whole app permission model. So you, the, if you are a developer, the first thing you would do is, OK, I want to register an application AAD. You might be familiar with this if you have developed UC applications, UCW applications. So we have something here new called application permissions. Uh, in UCWA, it was delegated permissions. Here, you are running as a trusted application. So you'll go to this application permissions. And I'm going to zoom in. OK. So you see a bunch of scopes. Uh, and depending on what kind of applications you're building, you are going to use those scopes. I strongly encourage uh, you to use the scopes that you're going to be using instead of just blindly uh, choosing all the scopes. Uh, because uh, from a tenant point of view, they want to know what, uh, what resources you're going to access. And this is going to give them a, a good view of what resources they're going to access. So for audio video, we have introduced two new scopes. Uh, one is the send and receive PSTN, that means uh, you can get phone calls to your application and you can actually make out phone call, make phone calls out. Uh, the other is you can send a, you can receive and send or VoIP and video calls to your applications. So I have an app that has been registered with these scopes. Of course, once you click the scopes, uh, you can you can save them. 
uh, and I have an app that is already registered. And these, and these permissions will actually surface themselves as a part of the consent process for a tenant admin. So when they are, the, of course these are trusted applications, so only a tenant admin can have the permissions to actually uh, provision these for their particular tenant. And so as part of that registration, which we'll get to, um, they will see a consent screen and it will actually reflect those exact scopes and capabilities that you selected and they will have to actually accept to allow that app to use those permissions. Cool. Um, so I want to show something live. Um, I just typed this one string. Uh, I really like colors. Press one to choose blue and yellow. Uh, if you guys have any catchy strings, let me know. I can, I can actually try it. So I'm just going to play it. I have a website. Okay. So it looks like my prompt. I I don't think you heard it, but it looks like I'm I'm fine with the audio audio quality. Uh, this is a website we have to build audio prompts based on the text you you, you type. It's like a, uh, it dynamically generates WAV files. So I'm going to download that WAV file, and uh, let me save it. Uh, so I'm going to save it as rename demo and I'm going to place it in my solutions folder where I have all the prompts. Um, going to generate one more. Uh, what do you want to generate? Uh, let's just say I really I like I like trusted Press one to choose yes. Press to choose no. Maybe. <laughs> Just gonna make sure the audio is fine. Okay. Okay. Same thing. I'm gonna make sure I save it. Oh, there. So I have two WAV files I just recorded. Um, and I'm going to go back to my solution. This is my solution. I uh, want to point out a few things, but I'll come back to that. But quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add them to my resources file. Uh, add existing item. I'm going to add this and this to my resources file. Uh, I'm just going to make a small change so that it gets copied to my uh, service. So it's just copy always and copy always. And I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to deploy this new solution with the new recordings. Um, publish. Yes. So while that is Published. Uh, while, while that is getting published, uh, what I wanted to show you is some of the things that uh, we are, it's a very early stage thing uh, where we are developing a C-sharp SDK for you to help build your applications. Uh, so I'm going to show you a sneak peek of that. Uh, <clears throat> what we have here is uh, projections based on our REST APIs. So for every resource you see uh, that is documented on the Trusted API platform, we have some kind of a projection. Uh, think of it as a, uh, a model you can use from your application. And you, can, you don't have to worry about serialization, deserialization, handling the webhooks. Everything is plumbed in through this SDK. Uh, we will make that SDK available through uh, sometime. When are we making the SDK? Yeah, we we'll talk about that um, after the code walkthrough. But we uh, we plan on doing uh, a preview of not only the uh, API layer itself, but also a preview of the SDK in uh, early 2017. But we'll talk we'll talk a little bit of that after the 
code walk through. Yeah, so I have used that, um, uh, the early version of the SDK to build this application. And my application logic is pretty straightforward where I have this one class where I say whenever I get an incoming call, so I registered handling incoming audio video call. So whenever I get a call, I have a handler registered. And if you go to the handler, it's pretty straightforward where if, if I, I, I look at the commands that are getting from the IVR menu that I'm running, and if the menu says I need to play a prompt, I call the corresponding API again provided, uh, I, I wanna first accept the call. Once I accept the call, I, you guys are familiar with this, there is a flow created uh, for the actual uh, audio video call, similar to what we did uh, in UCMA. And on the flow, when it gets connected, that means the media is established, uh, you can start playing prompts. And this prompts is, can be anything, as long as it's, it's, a, it's a wave file, it will just play. Uh, so we just recorded a couple of wave files, and all it's gonna do is, it's gonna use this play prompt API to play those prompts based on the DTM of inputs we gave. Um, so it has a DTM of uh, recognition where it, it's con uh, uh, constantly listening for the DTM of tones, and depending on that, it's gonna play the prompt that we have already recorded. So that's what we're gonna show. And uh, one other thing I wanna let, so when, when you deploy this application, uh, this is signing out. Uh, there is a tenant, uh, I was gonna show you the tenant admin view where uh, a tenant admin can, sorry, this is signing out. Uh, so a tenant admin can actually go to the commandlet, and if he has an EFI license, he can buy phone numbers for this application and assign these phone numbers to the application. So think of, you build an IVR solution. The same IVR solution, of course, you can customize it. I am I am company A, I am Contoso, I wanna, I wanna use your IVR solutions with a certain, certain set of customized prompts, and I can get a phone number for myself and assign it to that, uh, that particular instance of the application. A company B can do the same thing, get their own phone numbers, assign it to the, the instance of the application. So you're running a service, but it's actually working for two different companies at the same time for two different phone numbers. So you can build your application that is multi-tenanted as well, uh, and of course you can, you can use some sort of customizations for particular, particular tenants. Uh, let's see if our application has been deployed. Uh, it's still going on. Uh, Do we want to show uh, the uh, PowerShell um, experience for registering? Uh, I was going to show that, but it looks like we have some issues with uh, the PowerShell. Um, well, so l like we mentioned, the, the ability to, to register those, those endpoints will be in the ability of the, the tenant admin, uh, of course, through a, a PowerShell uh, interface, but also um, we're building out a user uh, experience within the Skype for Business admin portal. In the same way that you'd go in to configure your organization uh, auto attendant, for example, the same way that you might go and configure queues within the Skype for Business admin portal, you'll be able to go in and select the, uh, the applications tab, uh, and the tenant admin will be able to uh, not only kind of configure those endpoints with the with the fields that they need to register that, um, which can include everything from what is the SIP identity I want to assign to the trusted endpoint. Do I want that to be helpdesk at contoso.com? Do I want a notifications at contoso.com, for example? Uh, as well as some of the, the, the needed information uh, about the particular application. So it's unique client ID, for example, the callback URL that we want to specify specifically for that endpoint. Uh, now one thing you may say is that you want to sell your solution a lot, you don't want to have to have a tenant admin that will um, you know, have to know and go in and you know, fill, get your client ID for your app. You want them to have really a seamless experience to get your application. Uh, and that's where we get into some of the work that we're doing around uh, ex exposing discovery for tenant admins. And what that means is exposing your solutions through a marketplace type model. Uh, whether that's the Office Store uh, or the Azure App Source, um, to be able to actually uh, 
let users discover your solution through that store and be able to provision that for your tenant, have some of those fields automatically populated based on your solution after they kind of go through the whole marketplace process, uh, but be able to then customize from there certain aspects of your solution. Uh, not only things like phone number assigning particular phone numbers for the, the solution and the, the SIP identity, um, but we're also going to give you extensibility to add custom configuration for your particular your particular app. So if your app is a um, you know a customer care application, you may have certain configuration that you want to provide to a tenant admin uh, for them to configure your particular application. If you have a different type of emergency notifications application, that may be a bit of a different configuration. So we're going to give you a custom experience to actually be able to. Uh, go and configure those, those apps uh, and expose that all through the Skype for Business admin portal. I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to show you the tenant admin view of the app we have configured uh, to give you some idea. Uh, let's see if it doesn't work. Go back to the demo. Um, let's just check our deployment. Looks like it's deployed. Uh, so we should be able to call that number and play the new prompts. David, do you mind calling that number now? Yeah, absolutely. Let's switch over. So. See this? Yep. Oh, let's jump back. And what was that phone number? Same number. Oh wait, we deployed to that same number we called earlier. So we'll go to recent and let's give that number a call. I really like colors. Press one to choose blue. Press two to choose yellow. To repeat these options, press zero. Okay, I'm going to choose one. I like trusted application API. Press one to choose yes. Press two to choose maybe. To repeat these options, press zero. Okay, definitely yes. Please wait while we transfer your call. So it's going to transfer to the same user that you see. So we can see we just got that, that call transfer. And you can see phone and there we go now we're connected in, a, in an audio call from that, from that uh, uh, phone, phone over, over to this to user on Skype business. Business. <laughs> pretty cool clap for that maybe uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 so if you, I can actually uh, show you the uh, tenant admin view of, us, of okay. the app as well uh, so this is the app that uh, this particular tenant has configured. Uh, one thing that will be interesting is basically you can you can assign the phone number here. So David called this number. This is the phone number that you assign to the app, uh, um, and uh, you can you can assign as many phone numbers. You can have multiple phone numbers all uh, landing on the same application. So you can get a one eight hundred number or a, or a local number. You can assign it to the same application. Great. Ganesh, would you be able to look, uh, show a bit uh, in your code um, of the overall structure of the solution, what different pieces that you have there, um, what you were deploying to Azure? Sure. So this, this is a stateful service. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember the diagram that we saw for building a stateful service. Uh, this is very similar to that where we have a middle, uh, there's a front end with a web role which basically takes in the web request. Uh, it passes on to a middle tier layer uh, where it maintains the state and it uses Azure queue storage as a way of communication between the web role and the worker role. So this is a sample that we, we are trying to uh, may, uh, give it to some of, some of the early adopters. Uh, we, are we are consistently working on it, making it better. Uh, so we have the front end solution, which is the web role, uh, which which takes in all the web requests. And of course, this is a client model, which is the SDK version of uh, our trusted application API. Uh, we have this Azure application code. This is where most of the business logic lies. 
uh, uh, this is a worker. We configured this as a cloud service, which is there's a web role and there's the worker role. And Azure Application Core is the worker role, which essentially uh, show does this, which uh, which which takes in an incoming call, configures the flow, and plays the prompt on the flow. Excellent, great. So this will be a uh, again uh, another code sample that we'll be looking to provide as a a part of the preview so that you'll be able to use, um, you know, use these capabilities yourself as well as have this helper SDK really to accelerate um, some of your development for these scenarios. So let's jump back over to the slide. And grab this clicker. I'm gonna quickly walk through what, uh, the basic call flow here. Uh, assuming your application is provisioned by a tenant, you got a, uh, the application receives a phone call, again, through the webhook, it is configured uh, on incoming call, accepted the call, played the greetings, and you can play any number of greetings. I just showed you a way of uh, nesting the play prompts, so you can have any number of, any layers of nesting, um, and uh, at any point in time, it can recognize the DTMF, it can, uh, play further prompts if necessary, or transfer it to an agent, or playback, um, anything else, an advertisement while transferring, you can do all those things uh, with the APIs. Uh, so we actually, just we walked through some of these steps, so we talked a bit about uh, the registration, the process of, we started in the Azure portal as the developer, um, we will be adding a step there to let you actually register that, um, against the Skype for Business online service, which we, we didn't show here, but uh, as a developer in ISV, you'll have a step to actually be able to register that app uh, against Skype for Business online. Uh, we showed a, a little bit of the, the, the basic code SDK and, and sample that we have, um, and we talked about how tenant admins will be able to provision trusted endpoints uh, for your particular uh, application through PowerShell, but also through uh, a UI experience within the Skype for Business admin portal. And then we saw uh, that quick demo of uh, a very basic uh, IVR scenario. Um, so we don't have much time, but one thing I, I want to show is um, a, a proof of concept that we've done just to get you thinking about some of the other scenarios that uh, can be possible uh, through the trusted uh, application API. Um, so you may have heard quite a bit around um, the Microsoft Bot framework and a lot of the work that we're doing there um, to provide a single service to create uh, bots um, and expose those to multiple different channels and conversation uh, experiences. Um, what we have actually done as a, as a proof of concept and, and what we're continuing to do more work on is we've actually, because this is a basic REST API that we provide for Skype for Business Online, we can actually connect to various cloud services uh, directly using that API. And so what we've done is we've actually uh, connected Skype for Business Online directly to Bot Framework uh, and built that in so that we can expose some of these experiences and customer care scenarios directly through those Bot Framework channels. So if you haven't checked out Bot Framework, I very much encourage you to uh, go and take a look at that. It exposes some very powerful services. So what we're going to look at here very quick is uh, an example uh, demo that uses both the trusted ap application API as well as um, as well as bot framework. Um, and you can see here that I'm just in my Skype consumer client, um, and you can see that I have a contact called Meteo Healthcare. Um, and this is just a bot that I've actually added just for this organization. Uh, and I can go over and I can actually say hi to, uh, to this bot. And Skype is actually just one of those consumer channels that's uh, exposed uh, through bot framework. Um, and what we're gonna see here, and hopefully my bot is actually up and running, let's do a quick check here. If not, luckily I have my bot framework page open and I'm just gonna make sure that uh, we've got a valid connection to this, uh, this particular bot for the organization. You can see here some of the you know, consumer channels that are uh, exposed through bot framework. Um, let's try that test one more time, there we go. Test succeeded, so we're gonna go back over here I'm gonna do a quick reset uh, of this bot. Perfect, the bot's not responding. I'm gonna go say hi to this application. 
Um, and this, uh, this bot will actually now respond to me directly within consumer client. I can use some of the features of bot framework like cards here. I'm gonna select book, book appointment. Um, the bot is gonna go pull some available appointments for me with my, uh, my physician at this organization. I'm gonna select 4 p.m. Uh, and you can see what's gonna happen here is that we're actually now going to uh, bridge this bot framework channel directly into the scenario we saw earlier. So we saw earlier a customer care scenario web page to web page for an agent. We're actually now going to connect this user in, in Skype to that same framework that we had for the full kind of customer care and contact center. So if I go here, say, you know, do I have any special requests? Yeah, I do. I'm wondering, do I need any forms for this appointment? So I'm just going to say, yes, I do have, you know, some questions. Um, what's going to happen now is we're actually now going to get connected to a our backend trusted application. That's going to find a user that's available within that organization to take the call, who I happen to be logged in as. And you can see now that I got that prompt over in Skype for Business, that customer David Newman is now requesting uh, help for his appointment from Skype. I've got some information that has been passed over in this IM, so I can just reply directly here. I can say, hi, David. How can I help? And over here in the customer phase, we see that this customer now just got a message here uh, directly from that agent. So I can say, oh, hello. And if we go back and look, you can see that we've now bridged that conversation between this consumer channel. The power of this is that not only do I get some of those rich cognitive services from bot framework, but I can write my code once and be able to enable that across multiple channels. So let's take another channel uh, within bot framework. Let's go look at a Facebook channel. So if we see here, I have the same healthcare organization who has a Facebook page, it's Metio Healthcare. Um, I'm a, you know, can I'm a patient, I'm gonna go and just, you know, message this healthcare organization directly. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say, ah, you can see I started a conversation with it earlier. And there we go. So it's actually kind of continuing on from where I started, but I'm basically now, I'm connected to that same bot, but now through Facebook. And so if I go through this flow again, and I select, yes, uh, you know, I want an appointment at 4 p.m. Now let's close this existing conversation with the agent. You can see I'm getting the same questions directly through this new channel. So do I have requests? Yes, I do. We're now getting connected from the consumer channel directly into our trusted application. And again, we've now bridged that conversation from that new consumer channel. So I've written one backend, you know, trusted application, and now through the power bot framework, I can now expose that through multiple consumer channels and bring in the intelligence of an interactive bot. So really, uh, again, proof of concept that we put gives you an idea of some of the things that we're uh, working on and some of the new powerful scenarios that you can enable through this API. Yeah, I'll just add one more point to that. Uh, so traditionally, if a customer is trying to reach a, a IVR or contact center solution, it goes like, okay, who are you? I am Ganesh Sridhar and prove yourself you are Ganesh Sridhar. But here, with the customer, uh, with Skype and Facebook, I already know you, your identity. So even before you reach out, I know your identity. The other, other powerful aspect of it is call back. So if you have a lengthy queue, you can say, okay, I'll call you back on your Skype, and I don't need to get your phone number or anything. I know your Skype identity, so I can just call you back on your Skype identity. So there are new powerful scenarios you can enable with this one. So what are, what are your next steps here? Uh, we've given you a, a, a pretty broad preview of what we're offering. We've looked at some of the, uh, the SDK code. Um, we plan, as we mentioned earlier, we plan to do a preview of these capabilities in early 2017. Uh, we will be looking for customers and partners to be um, early adopters as we work through many of these scenarios. So we um, absolutely encourage you to actually join the new Skype for Business uh, community at this link here. We will be making announcements about the preview um, as a part of this community. So if you join that, uh, you'll receive those announcements. We're targeting some key features that you saw today for that initial preview. Um, you likely also have you know, many questions around you know, when is feature X going to be available. You talked about a lot of different scenarios at the beginning that I, you, know, you didn't see here or you didn't show here. Um, like I mentioned, we're going to be starting with an initial set of features. 
And we ex plan to really expand rapidly on those and enable many different uh, new trusted app scenarios. Um, and we're going to do that in an iterative process. So um, we're going to we're going to be talking deeper about media. We're going to be talking about uh, more complex scenarios um, that involve bot framework in the future. So you can expect more announcements from that um, from us on that as well. Really, today we hope that you kind of got an additional, uh, really a good idea of what that base framework looks like for service applications, um, and you have an idea of that general architecture and kind of where we're going and when we're going to announce uh, the preview availability. Um, one other thing I'll call out is that uh, there were some other great sessions that we actually referenced quite a bit uh, in this session today. So I very much encourage you uh, to go and check out the recordings for those sessions if you were not able to attend those in person. And we do have a session uh, tomorrow morning uh, where we're going to highlight some of our certified partner solutions. Uh, we're going to have some of those partners come on stage with James. Um, they're going to showcase really um, the types of solutions that they've built on our platform. We're going to see some, uh, some demos there. So that will be very valuable for you to really apply some of the, the learnings here and see how some of our real partners are actually uh, applying those solutions. So with that, I think we are over time or we're out of time. So uh, we'll take maybe a couple questions, but then we can take the rest of the questions. Ganesh and I will stick here uh, after the session uh, if you have specific questions. Uh, if anybody has a question now, if you could go to the mic. Um, so we can hear that question. Hello. There Is we it go. on? At one time there was a, some talk about a UCMA to trusted application API converter or is there anything, is that still in the works? Yeah, so what you'll find within the, within the SDK, there will, the SDK that we've talked about, uh, there will be many uh, similar APIs that fit that translate um, from, that will be very familiar to UCMA developers, and they translate well to that SDK. So Ganesh actually called out one of those, for example. But um, I think the overall point is that um, because we're bringing in some new concepts um, and really new features and things that we didn't have within UCMA, we will not have a direct equivalent SDK where you can just port uh, your UCMA apps you know, directly to the new interface. Um, and that's due to some, you know, it's, it, the architecture is, is different and really designed first for the cloud. I don't know if we have anything else to add on that. Yeah, and, and UCMA, you, if you're familiar with UCMA, it exposed a lot of SIP, and SIP concepts directly to the app, like you can access the SIP headers and other things. So it's not going to be one-to-one, -one, but the conceptually you can relate to what you, okay, there's an endpoint, there's a call, there's a conversation. It's, go, it's all going to be the same. So porting is not going to be just one day work, but at least it's not like one year work as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you tell something about support for uh, hybrid or even on-premise configurations? Yeah, um, so uh, currently um, we, have, we have no plans right now to actually port this uh, REST API interface from Skype for Business Online uh, to on-premises. Um, now, the reason for that is because a lot of the uh, features that we're bringing in are designed first for cloud-only scenarios, um, and they'll use our media platform as a service, um, uh, which is designed for the cloud. So um, there's currently no plans to really kind of port this API um, directly within on-premises. We do plan on continuing to support uh, UCMA for on-premises-based uh, scenarios, but a lot of the new scenarios and features you see here will be designed uh, specifically for Skype for Business Online. Yeah, and we are kind of looking into uh, one one uh, integration with on-prem, which is if you have your own PBX, uh, we could get a phone number assigned to this app through the PBX, uh, and the PBX can stay on-prem. Uh, so we are still looking into enabling that scenario uh, for the on-prem support. We don't have the details yet, but we are definitely looking into the supporting that as a scenario uh, from from the service application point of view. So some of the same hybrid scenarios that you see on the, the voice side, exactly as Ganesh said, um, we are we are currently looking into supporting those types of hybrid voice scenarios um, through the API surface as well. But we don't have details yet to announce on that. Great. Thank you.
geschreven. Another small question, will we trust that SDK is open source? That's the plan that we still haven't worked out fully yet, but, but we are heading in the direction of actually open sourcing the SDK so that we can have some community support. Yeah, yes. And like we mentioned, we did call out specifically, we, uh, we showed the C-sharp example here. Um, we do have plans around, um, again, no details, whether we do that ourselves or we do a community-driven project to do uh, a Node.js uh, interface as well. Again, it's all REST, so uh, really the, the possibilities, there's many possibilities there, and so we plan on um, not only being you know, focused on C-sharp, but also on other uh, interfaces as well. Uh, this is more towards the UCMA uh, API. So when we do the building trusted application, basically it has an endpoint registered with a telephone number. But uh, the question is more, let's just say, at the, for dialing conferencing, we have the conferencing attended already configured for the Skype for business. Is there any way we can customize how conferencing attended behavior? C customizing, uh, say uh, let's say, again? conferencing attendant, let's say somebody call a conferencing attendant, conferencing attendant, take the call and he asks to do a certain task, uh, enter the conferencing ID, that sort of thing. Is there any way we can intercept from a trusted application and we take control over that and change the workflow? Uh, so high level it's possible, though I would like to think, uh, think with you uh, after this one, maybe we can walk through your case and see if yeah. what So, so attended, Attended console type apps are one of the scenarios that were, now again, it may, be a con it may be a combination of client side capability for attended console or um, using the trusted application API for some of those um, scenarios. It is definitely a, you know, a high priority scenario for us and we do have many certified partners uh, in that space for on-premises today and we're kind of working with them as well to bring, um, understand those scenarios as we bring those to the trusted app API. Great, um, so I think we're well over time, so we'll take any other questions uh, offline. Please uh, uh, complete the session eval. Uh, we definitely look at all those and can help us create you know, better presentations in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot.